Hi guys, Andre here today from the Roof Repair Specialist. We're a roofing company based here in Southern California. So please keep that in mind while watching this video. Any installation methods and any recommendations that we give are to our local codes and standards. So if you're in a different climate zone or if you're in a different state, please make sure to contact your local rep to make sure that you build a roof according to your climate in your area. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to properly install a scupper flashing. A scupper is essentially a drain that lets the water drain from your flat roof through your parapet wall and off your roof. We do a lot of leak repairs and we've noticed that most of the leak repairs on most of the leaks on a flat roof are on that scupper area. Uh, that's because a lot of water pools up there and tends to leak. So th we're going to be taking extra uh, measures and extra while installing a scupper drain to make sure that the weakest point of your roof is watertight. Uh, we always say that your roof is only as good as its weakest link. So today we want to show you how to properly install that weak link and have a watertight system. All right, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is prep the metal flashing prior to the install. Now we can do this on or off the roof. We like to do ours in the warehouse even before we get on the field, but you can do yours wherever you want. So the first thing we're going to do is cut the corners off this scupper flashing. And the reason for that is we don't want these sharp corners to poke through the uh, torch down roof after the installation. So we want to round them off. Just take a pair of metal snips and slightly round them off. Now they don't have to be perfect. You just want to get rid of the sharp edge. So we're going to do that to all four corners here. And this is something that most manufacturers recommend and even the ones that don't, this is definitely just a good measure to take. The second thing we want to do is take off the oil off the galvanized flashing. And the reason for this is during the manufacturing process there are oils that are used. Those oils pro prohibit proper adhesion. So the, the way we want to do that is we use white vinegar. You can use either white vinegar or a metal etching solution. White vinegar is cheaper, easily found, and it's organic. So you just want to give it a light spray with the vi white vinegar. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that on both sides. And you're going to see why a little bit later. You don't have to go overkill, just do a light spray. Get a, something rough, either a light grit sandpaper, a sponge, or steel wool will work. Just kind of give it a rub to get that white vinegar working. After that, you want to wash that white vinegar off so you get rid of all those residue. We have a bucket of water here. You can do that with a hose easily. You just want to drench it with water. There you go. Now, of course, before you do anything else, you want to wait for this to dry. For our demonstration purposes, we have one that's already dry. So once you have the corners cut, the metal etched, and the flashing is dry, the last step to preparation is priming it with an asphalt primer. What this does, since the torch down roofing is an asphalt-based material, this is a primer that's based with asphalt that's going to ensure proper adhesion. So I want to shake that up. You don't want to go on too thick, but you want to make sure you get good coverage. Now the same way that we etched the back side, we're also going to be priming the back side. And this is something that most uh, roofing manufacturers don't recommend. Not that they don't recommend it, it's not a requirement, but you're going to see that it's an added measure to ensure that our roof stays leak free. So right now our flashing is prepared. The primer does need to cure, it just takes a few minutes, but we're gonna set this to one side and get started on the roof while this dries. We've got our flashing prepped and we're gonna be installing the first layer of torch down roofing. Now on this roof, we've already got our glass base installed. You can take a look at our other video on how to properly install glass base. So the nailing pattern on this is not perfect, but that's not what we're showing today. Now this roof, we're gonna be installing a double layer at the penetration. Since this is the weakest point of the roof, the rest of the roof is not going to get a layer of smooth torch down, but this specific area is along with the rest of the penetrations. Uh, what smooth torch down is, is similar to the cap sheet, the last layer. It has the film on the bottom that gets burned off. This top is smooth, so it sandwiches the flashing in between the two layers of torch down. So let's get started. We're going to be using our detailed torch for this installation. Since we're working in a small area, we want to make sure we have a controlled fire and uh, we are take our time and get good seals in the, on the corners. Make sure you have your uh, fire extinguisher with you always when working with a torch. And use a striker, not a lighter. All right. 
So we've already got the smooth in place. We've got it cut and we're going to get ready to start burning. For right now, we're not going to be burning the seams and these edges here. We're going to be doing the field and leaving the seams off for later to make sure we pay special attention to those areas. So we've torched this center down, now next to the edges. The edges are what really is important, and so you want to get a good bleed out around the sides. So that's why we want to do the middle first, then the edges. But at the end of the day, it's whatever works for you and whatever you like and whatever you're used to. But this is the way I've been taught. So as you can see here, I'm working a section at a time, making sure you get the proper heat on it, making sure the flame is primarily on the torch down, not on the glass base. You want 80% approximately of your heat to be on the torch down, 20% to be on the glass base. Then you want to work at a section at a time and press on the torch down membrane to get a proper bleed out. We'll show you a close up later on what a good bleed out is supposed to look like. So let's continue here. As you can see here, one thing I like to do is uh, install the sides, burn the sides, seam the sides here first, then do the top. So the same thing goes for the bottom. What we're going to be doing is installing and burning this bottom six inches, then doing this long strip on the side. Now that we've got our torch down in place, we're going to be installing the scupper flashing. As you remember in the beginning of the video, we've already cut the corners, etched it, and primed it. 
Now, you're going to see the reason why we primed this back of the, the back of the flashing, something that most roofing contractors don't do. Again, this is not a necessary step, just an extra measure that we like to take. It doesn't cost much. So the back where you primed it, you want to take some modified mastic or some roofing cement. We like to use tropicals and apply a light bead along the back. Now you don't want to get too close to the edges, nor do you want to go thick. You want to get about an eighth of an inch of modified mastic on here. And what that's going to do is when you sit this scupper flashing in place, it's going to create an additional layer of waterproofing between the two layers of torch down. So as you can see here, we haven't gone on too thick. We've applied a light bead all around, just a bed of uh, mastic. And what we're going to do is, when we slide this in place, we're going to push it in and make sure that bed of mastic really sits in there. Now when we install the torch down on top, even if the first layer of torch down fails, you still have the smooth and also the mastic in place. So we're providing second and third layers of waterproofing in our weakest points. All right, now that we've got the flashing in place, we want to start off by nailing it to prevent the expansion and contraction of the metal. Since the expansion and contraction of the metal is a lot faster than the torch down roofing, that causes micro uh, movements and causes separate, eventually causes separation. So what we want to do is we want to nail it approximately every two to three inches on the sides. And if you look closely here, you can see we're going to start off. Now we want to start off from the center and move to the sides. Because if, you can imagine if we hit the two corners and the middle is sticking up, that's constantly moving up and down. So we want to start off at the center and move to the edges, nailing every two to three inches on center. You want to make sure you put a nail right at the corner. Now that we've got the nails in, we're going to do one more last step before going on with the final torch. As you guys remembered, we primed the metal flashing for proper adhesion. You can see here, if you look closely, that the nails that we installed are not primed. So that's going to cause future problems. So what we want to do is go lightly over all the nails, just a quick dab, in order to make sure our entire flashing is going to adhere very well to the final coat. All right, here we have our pre-cut torch down cap sheet. Now you can see here, this is granules on top, it's granulated cap sheet, and it has the thin film that gets burnt off during the torch down process. We've already cut this. It gets installed in pieces. So the first portion goes on the flat roof, on the flashing, and up the parapet wall is about four inches. Manufacturer spe specifications recommend two inches higher than your can strip. In this demonstration, so since we're not putting a can strip, we just decided to go four inches up on each side. We want to align that properly before we get started with our torch. So we've got this set in place. And let's get started torching. Now, the same thing as while we we're doing the smooth torch down, we want to use our detailed torch to make sure we have a controlled fire. We want to make sure we have our fire extinguisher right next to us. And we want to take our time and work on this slowly, burning the fields first, then moving towards the edges. So as you can see here, before we install the last layer of torch down roofing on the parapet wall, you can see the layers that we have here. So we've got our glass base 
Then we've got our smooth torch down roofing. We've got our primed flashing on both sides with the mastic on the back side pressed in with proper nailing. We've got our first layer of torch down roofing that's installed on the roof coming up to the parapet wall, giving a nice seam here. Then our last layer of protection is going to be our last layer on the parapet wall here. So you can really see how this is a multi-level approach. We've got a few different things that we're using for waterproofing. So even if the primary waterproofing fails, we've got secondary and third layers of waterproofing. So we're going to be installing the last layer of torch down roofing that's going to be going from the corner of the parapet wall on the roof up and over, covering our final layer of flashing and smooth. As we did before, the first thing we want to do is align our piece of pre-cut torch down, hold it in place while we tack it on. Working on the parapet wall presents a few extra challenges you don't have on the roof field where you're working on a vertical surface. That's why you want to make sure you get the middle tacked on in place. So now even if you let it go, you're not losing your place and you're not misaligning your sheets. So once we've got that done, we'll continue with the field. And like before, I'm going to be leaving my seams out to do them at the end. All right, now that we've got our field torched in, we can get started with the seams.
All right, we've got our final layer in. If you noticed, I didn't pay much attention to this top here, and that's because we're gonna be installing a coping metal up here. So our seam here is nearly not as crucial as our seams down here. Now the same thing goes for this seam here. Though we wanna pay close attention to all seams and all joints, this seam here is not as crucial as these seams in the bottom uh, because you have a double layer here. So even if water, if, even if this seam opens up, which it's not, uh, you're still gonna have a layer of roofing that's gonna go over and beyond and up the parapet wall. Now, even though we're done with our torch down roofing, we still have one last step where we're gonna take that's gonna add the final layer of protection. We're gonna be installing a white mastic here at these corners because when all the water comes here, the first corner that will fail are these two corners here. So let me grab the mastic and I'll be right back. All right, we are ready to go into the final step. So we've already installed our torch down roofing. The last thing we're gonna do is seal these corners here with some white mastic. Now we like to use Apox 587. It's a white mastic, you can see it here. Uh, it works very well and looks nice. It gives a nice clean look on a white roof. But you can also use just conventional black mastic with black webbing. But for this purpose, we're gonna be installing the white mastic. I like to get a glove on in one hand. Now, as always, guys, make sure if you're using either white mastic or black, it doesn't matter, make sure you use either polyester mesh or for black mastic, the asphalt embedded mesh webbing uh, to give that uh, mastic some backbone and strength so it doesn't crack. So we're gonna do a light coat. Again, less is more on these applications. We like to use a two inch brush instead of a trowel so you can get it all nice and clean. So we're gonna apply it to both sides here. And we, got, we wanna get the inside of that scupper flashing right here. All right, so we've got our first coat on. Now we've got our polyester cut so it can wrap around the edges. So that's why I have this glove so I don't get too messy. We're gonna embed that in there. And you can see I'm wrapping around here in these corners. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side here. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight. You just wanna make sure you get those corners nice and tight. Just working a little bit with your hands. Make sure It's nice and good. Now, once you've got it in place, you want to put a second coat of the white mastic right over it, just enough to embed that polyester completely in white mastic because you don't want that to be exposed to the sun. Get a semi-clean line here, straight line, just for appearances. Now guys, please do keep in mind, you don't wanna go on too thick. You don't wanna slobber it on. This is not your primary waterproofing here. This is just a light thin coat to protect it. So there you have it. The sealant's all done and your roof is ready to go. Again, please do keep in mind when installing scupper flashings or any other type of drains or penetrations on a flat roof, pay special attention, pay close attention while doing so. You can see we took a few extra measures and it's really gonna pay off in the long run. If you're building a roof to last a year, you can go ahead and slap whatever you want on. But if you wanna build a roof that's gonna last uh, for years to come, you wanna take the time and the detail and make sure you do it right. Tune in next time for our other videos. Thanks for tuning in.
Wait, 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 does it hurt? <laughs> Sorry. I got, it got blurry again. Hey guys, on. Oh. What do you do? That whatever recommendation we show you is going to be for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to put my head in the pocket and I stopped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prepare to walk off your roof. That's crazy. people and and their beliefs green turns to black green smoke to black green turns to black yeah that's what we stand for green turns to black green smoke to black green turns to black yeah that's what we stand for When all the people really need is some peace In all these moments where we turn to our weed It never caused no death, no disease Don't try and make it seem like we're some foolish here We're throwing away our lives as we're searching for the truth Don't need authority rules while we go under Still there ain't no crime using herbs Much respect to all the people thinking green not just the color, but the message in between. This is a mental weapon that you use frequently. To stop evil people and end their beliefs. Green turn to black, green smoke to black, green turn to black, yeah, that's what we stand for. Green turn to black, green smoke to black, green burn to black, yeah, that's what we stand for. Green turn to black, green smoke to black, green turn to black, yeah. Green smoke to black, green burn to black, yeah.